Mike Hughes. A firefighter who had saved the life of a baby 17 years prior. Got a letter honoring his long career. Even now that he is retired. He still thinks back on many different rescue missions. But one in particular sticks in his memory. One day at the barracks. Mike, who had fought many intense fires in his firefighting career, got a call that would change his entire life. When Mike and his colleagues arrived at the scene of a reported fire in a family home, they discovered that half of the house had already been completely destroyed by flames. They realized the seriousness of the situation and chose to look for an entrance even though the house was in danger of collapsing. The team had a critical responsibility. Aware of the need for swift thinking and action. Despite the routine nature of their work. Rescue operations like these held immense. Importance due to potential consequences. As the fire intensified. The team quickly created an entrance. Navigating through smoke and burnt areas. Mike part of the team creating the entrance. Followed his instincts. Carefully checking each room for evacuees. Amidst the intense heat. He spotted a sign of life, a crib in one of the rooms. Despite the adrenaline. Mike restrained himself. Staying focused and realizing the potential. Consequences of any mistake in the rescue operation. He discovered a baby in the crib in that room. Stuck and in dire need of help. Mike raced to save the baby. Not realizing at the moment how much this rescue would change his life. 17 years on. He got a letter considering the long-term impact. Of that specific rescue on his firefighting career. He realized the house was already half burned. Down and it was only a matter of time until the other half burned to the ground. Hot smoke filled the room, in another 20 seconds. Things might have turned out differently following your instructions. He promptly located the baby nestled in a crib in the bedroom. Without hesitation, he rescued the nine-month-old from the crib and ensured its safety. Mike successfully brought the baby to safety. And then he assisted his colleagues in tackling the rest of the fire. Once the rescue operation concluded, uncertainty loomed over the fate of the baby. While he knew the child was in good hands for the time being, Mike found himself grappling with numerous questions about the incident for the rest of his life. His ignorance of the baby's condition worried him, and he spent restless nights wondering about the child's health. He wanted to know if the child was a girl or a boy, and if they had been exposed to too much smoke. But he never received an answer. Mike's thoughts about the rescue operation persisted even after he retired. Sometimes it kept him up at night. Which worried his family. Mike's family started to worry when they saw him struggle with the unknown. He ultimately made the decision to act. Independently and started an investigation. His quest for information commenced with. Inquiries among his former colleagues from the fire service. Although everyone remembered the event. No one could recall the baby's name. And there were no other leads to follow. This lack of information left Mike disappointed. Nevertheless. His fellow firefighters empathized with the challenge he faced. Acknowledging that every firefighter has a. Memorable rescue etched in their memory. Mike's longing for answers persisted until a breakthrough emerged unexpectedly. Mike. Maintaining a strong relationship with his mother. Sought her advice. She encouraged her son to express his worries and thoughts. After realizing how distressed he was. Mike confided in his mother about his increasing obsession. With the baby that had been rescued and asked for. Any tips she might have on where to find out more. Mike's mother eagerly helped him. Always supportive and proud of her son. She had been his biggest admirer all of his professional life. And had carefully saved many of the newspaper stories about her brave son. Together they were going through this collection when they. Came across a specific newspaper with the headline.
She's alive this realization gave Mike some much needed clarity at last. The newspaper served as the ideal starting point for Mike's quest. Through it, he discovered the current location of the now grown baby and learned her name. Danielle Davidson. This revelation provided Mike with a crucial lead to pursue. Subsequently, he extended his search to Facebook. As it was the only viable option to locate the now 17-year-old Danielle. Armed with just a name. Progress proved challenging due to the prevalence. Of individuals named Danielle Davidson. Undeterred. Mike decided to reach out to as many people fitting the criteria. Hoping the real Danielle would respond. Mike persevered even though he was initially disappointed with the different replies. Finally. He got a response from someone who appeared to be the Danielle Davidson he was looking for, which seemed to be a breakthrough. After getting Mike's message, Danielle, who was nine months old at the time of the rescue, asked her parents for clarification. The inquiry was met with skepticism because Mike's message was brief. Hello. I'm Mike Hughes. When you were a baby, I believe I saved you from a fire. Despite their initial skepticism, Danielle and her parents chose to proceed cautiously. To confirm Mike's authenticity, Danielle posed a question only the actual firefighter who rescued her would know. Mike was put to the test with a question about a specific detail from 17 years ago. His prompt and accurate response. Recalling her mother's whereabouts during the rescue astonished Danielle's family. They were amazed not only by Mike's recollection of this small detail after all these years but also by his enduring commitment to finding the baby he had rescued, revealing the profound impact of Danielle's rescue on his life. Danielle had heard bits and pieces of stories about the fire, but she had never heard the whole story. She had no idea how much the fire would affect the firefighter's life. Nor how the rescue effort that followed would affect it. It wasn't until recently that she realized how important Mike was to her. She admitted that she would not be where she was now without him. She chose to respond to Mike's message verifying that. She was the Danielle he had saved from a burning house 17 years prior. Mike was taken aback when he received confirmation that the baby he had rescued had grown into a healthy adult. This marked the beginning of a meaningful friendship between Mike and Danielle. Danielle and Mike maintained contact, exchanging texts and keeping each other informed about their lives. Danielle shared details about her school, hobbies, and athletic achievements. After discovering all of Danielle's wonderful qualities, Mike felt a strong bond with her. Both of them treasured the beauty of their reunion after all these years. And both knew very well how much Danielle owed him. What happened next startled Mike even more. Danielle wanted to celebrate her impending graduation. With Mike because she knew that without him. She might not have gone to school. She valued the relationship they had quickly developed. Even though they had only spoken virtually. Danielle thought it was time for something different. One day, Mike found a large purple and black letter in his mailbox. Although he initially didn't know who had sent it. As soon as he opened it, he thought of Danielle. The letter sent by her contained a photo and as Mike read it, he felt an overwhelming sense of pride and emotion. The letter was an invitation to Danielle's graduation ceremony. Mike was pleasantly surprised and proud. Deciding to attend the ceremony. Being able to participate in this significant event in Danielle's life meant a lot to him. And Danielle's entire family was thrilled that Mike could share in this important moment. Danielle and Mike exhibited intense emotion when they saw each other after the ceremony. Tears began to form in their eyes. It's difficult to put into words. But these were clearly happy tears. Brought on by the awareness that things could have gone wrong. Danielle continued to be incredibly appreciative of Mike's team for saving her even after graduating. I feel like it's not quite real. Even though it is definitely my experience. 
It's just that sometimes it's hard to get completely. Danielle was the third person I've rescued from a fire in my career. And as they say, three times a charm. Although it had a shaky start, she successfully navigated her way through high school, emerging both accomplished and content. It's a perfect outcome. We are confident that Mike's mother was prouder than ever. And we anticipate that Mike and Danielle will maintain a lasting connection. When the crammed minibus pulled up to the bus stop, it didn't seem to have any seats left. But Elsa saw that this was a misleading sight. She wondered aloud how minibuses could possibly get bigger and bigger until they could carry an absurd amount of people. Elsa found herself thrust up against a person's back as the dense human flow carried her through the packed cabin. She drew in a breath, carefully taking up as little space as possible, and thanked God that she had found a place to sit. Elsa considered the inconvenience of paying in advance especially when confined in a hands-by-the-sides pose. In response to the driver's demand for cash up front, even though Elsa was having trouble finding cash in her shoulder bag, she was eventually able to extract coins from her puffer jacket pocket. The driver's irritated voice echoed through the entire cabin, urging passengers to pay up front. Elsa, while contending with the discomfort of the crowded bus, couldn't help but feel envious of those with their own cars, enjoying comfort and music on their commutes. This daily ritual on the overcrowded minibus during rush hour had become Elsa's norm. And though she rarely complained, she occasionally envied the convenience of private car owners. Reflecting on her financial situation, Elsa acknowledged that getting a driver's license, a previously contemplated idea, wouldn't have made a significant difference. Given her limited funds. In this packed room. Elsa fantasized about a time when she would have plenty of money. She worked as an office manager for a small company and made a modest salary. But her child's frequent sick leave prevented her from changing jobs. Her workplace's current tolerance was a result of extremely difficult circumstances. Elsa had numerous colorful dreams about becoming wealthy. The means of becoming wealthy was secondary to her imagination. Whether it was finding treasure in her backyard sandbox, helping an ordinary-looking elderly woman who turned out to be a billionaire, or winning the lottery, Elsa dreamed of having enough money for an apartment and a car, and of satisfying her son Patrick's toy cravings. No longer constrained by the need to save and scrape by from paycheck to paycheck, Elsa envisioned a future free from the humiliations of dealing with the social fund, applying for child benefits, and obtaining various certificates. In her dreams, she and Patrick could travel, even if it meant escaping to the south, perhaps to the sea. Elsa who hadn't experienced the sea in what felt like a century. Daydreamed so intensely that she nearly missed her son's daycare. Snapping back to reality. She realized the minibus was trying to pass her stop. She let out a loud cry. Announcing her intention to get off. And started to make her way through the packed bus. While dodging criticism from other riders. When Elsa finally made it to the door. She ran into an unexpected roadblock, the driver wouldn't stop at an unapproved location. She apologized and tried not to cry as she got out of the minibus and walked into a filthy, wet snowdrift. Only to discover that she had misplaced one of her gloves. Climbing out of the snowdrift with soaked boots. Elsa acknowledged the financial challenge ahead. With two weeks remaining until the next paycheck and only 800 rubles left. The prospect of buying new gloves didn't align with her modest budget. Despite this, she tried to maintain optimism, considering the relatively mild weather and convincing herself that gloves were a non-essential expense. As she briskly walked towards the daycare, she faced unwelcome news about Patrick's health, his throat had been hurting, and a potential illness loomed. After taking his temperature, 
Elsa realized that even though Patrick had only been in daycare for a week, she might have to take another sick day. Elsa defended her work commitments to the teacher. When she was confronted with the teacher's disapproval for not picking up her child earlier, she pointed out that many parents struggled to balance work and parenting. Elsa said sourly that they had no family support. That they had no grandparents and no aunts. When she got home alone with Patrick, she took his temperature and saw that he had a fever. Realizing their medicine supplies had run out, Elsa faced the urgency of visiting the 24-hour pharmacy. With Patrick's temperature at 38.2, Elsa decided to leave him alone for a short time and rushed to buy medicine. Despite having only 200 rubles in cash and 600 on her card, Elsa sighed, acknowledging the financial challenges until the next paycheck. On the way to the pharmacy, Elsa carefully navigated melting snow and puddles, resembling rivers and canals. At the pharmacy, she faced a total cost of 700 rubles for the necessary medicines. And with 100 rubles in hand and one five weeks until the paycheck, she realized she had to borrow money. Not being very religious, Elsa unintentionally slowed down as she passed a small church and saw people leaving after an evening service. Beggars and homeless people lined the church fence, asking for donations from parishioners, who threw money into their hats or outstretched palms. Elsa was pondering the scene when she noticed a young man among the beggars who was in a wheelchair. Elsa recognized something about his silhouette. Even though she couldn't see his face, the way his head was tilted, the way his shoulders were shaped, and his thick, dark curls. She noticed that the man looked a lot like her old boss as she walked carefully closer. Suddenly, the man lifted his head and locked eyes with her. She gasped immediately recognizing those eyes. That knows those lips Nolan she uttered in disbelief. He focused his gaze on her and skeptically said. Elsa they had met seven years ago when. Elsa had just graduated from college and was invited for an internship at a well-known law firm. The owners. Nolan and James were not only partners but also childhood friends. Despite being barely 30, young attractive intelligent and single, they had earned a reputation as the best lawyers in the city. When Elsa started her internship, her classmates envied her for spending the whole day around such handsome guys. They jokingly warned her about getting lost in the charm of the lawyers and becoming a lawyer's wife. However Elsa was determined to become a renowned lawyer herself. She voiced her ambition and said she didn't like jokes like that. Her classmates made fun of her. Saying that strong, self-assured men dominated the legal profession and that. The best she could hope for was a job as a notary public. Elsa clung to her beliefs and hoped to one day. Emulate Nolan and James by becoming a true professional. As long as she could watch her boss's work. Any kind of work would do. She considered it an unparalleled pleasure. Nolan and James respected Elsa despite their differences. Recognizing her ambition and willpower. Nolan's serious demeanor and dark hair stood in. Stark contrast to James's upbeat blonde nature and playful nature. Nolan remained serious and focused. While James the Joker and life of the party showed Elsa explicit signs of attention. He constantly complimented her appearance. Wit and efficiency hinting at his romantic interest. Elsa responded with jokes to James's advances. Which grew more intrusive every day. Despite his invitations to fancy restaurants. Movies or strolls Elsa politely declined. Citing her inability to accept. Elsa consistently declined responding with can't or don't want to. Every time James persistently inquired. She honestly explained her belief. Stating firmly you have to separate the flies from the cutlets. Work is work and relationships are relationships. No indiscretions with co-workers. 
That's my tenet my deep conviction. If not it will seriously impede my career. If you are interested in knowing. James seemed sincerely disappointed by her repeated denials. He sighed and said. Look at you so principled well fine. I won't force the dear one. If Elsa's classmates had heard these exchanges. They might have thought her crazy for turning down such a charming offer. Elsa kept these conversations to herself because she knew that. In reality. She was being a little dishonest when she turned James down so frequently. She would have accepted an invitation to a restaurant. For example without question if Nolan had sent it. Elsa realized she was dreaming of the impossible. Men like Nolan. Unapproachable and proud. Barely paid attention to someone like her. Despite her natural beauty. She underestimated herself. Choosing a business-like appearance with black. Gray. And beige shades. Nolan. However. Appreciated her professionally. And while Elsa yearned for more. She had to be content with his praise. In actuality. Scarlett, who also served as the attorney's personal assistant at the firm, was aware of Elsa's compassion for Nolan. Scarlett was a remarkable, fearless perceptive and intelligent young lady. Elsa continued to work hard and treasured every encouraging nod from Nolan. But for some reason, she kept her true feelings about him hidden from everyone. She immediately developed a dislike for Elsa as soon as she appeared in the office. From the beginning of Elsa's internship at the firm. Scarlett's attention was intrusive and piercing. The woman seemed to be waiting for Elsa to make even the slightest mistake. But Elsa had no intention of giving her that satisfaction. Instead, Elsa's determination to avoid giving Scarlett any satisfaction only irritated her more. Elsa often wondered about the cause of Scarlett's animosity. Questioning what she might have done to provoke such a reaction. One day in a hurry to deliver important documents. Elsa entered Nolan's office without knocking and found Scarlett there. Even though Elsa was unaware of what they were doing. Scarlett turned away from Nolan and moved out of the way when Elsa opened the door. For Elsa. Everything seemed to crumble at that very moment. Were they kissing hugging? Or were they just having a private conversation? She said sorry Nolan with embarrassment. The courier has finally brought the documents for. The case you asked to be informed about immediately. Pale with rage Scarlet hissed cynically. Have you not been instructed to knock before entering? I assumed you had more education. But even basic knowledge eludes you. Elsa turned as red as a beet. And tears welled up from embarrassment. I'm sorry please she barely repeated. I was just in a hurry and didn't think. Think next time. Scarlet. Adjusting her elegant fitted jacket. Said instructively. Thinking in general is a useful activity you know. Highly recommended. Nolan cut Scarlet off sternly that's enough Scarlet. I believe Elsa has already realized her mistake and apologized. Besides she apologized twice. And I am indeed looking forward to these papers. Scarlet snorted. Clacking her heels as she left the office. Elsa handed a stack of papers to Nolan. And as he took them. Their fingers touched for a fraction of a second. Elsa felt a jolt like electricity and hastily withdrew her hand. She looked at Nolan out of the corner of her eye. Realizing how ridiculous it must have looked. And his thoughtful. Attentive gaze met hers. Her cheeks burned with embarrassment once more. She wondered. Why does this keep happening? Today all I do is blush and humiliate myself in front of him. And again humiliate myself and blush. But Elsa was unprepared for Nolan's sudden. Warm smile and wink she was unsure so she asked if she could go Nolan nodded. Allowing her to leave Elsa hastily exited the office. Passing the surprised secretary and rushing into the women's restroom. There she splashed icy water on her face. 
attempting to calm down and alleviate the burning sensation. Feeling somewhat refreshed. Elsa was about to return to her office when Scarlett entered the restroom. Struggling to maintain composure. Elsa straightened her shoulders and lifted her chin. Intending to walk past Scarlett. However. Scarlett threw a remark at her. Questioning if she was going after Matt. Elsa momentarily not realizing that Matt was Nolan. Asked sharply what Scarlett meant. Scarlett with a condescending smile. Accused Elsa of playing the naive fool and insinuated. That Elsa was infatuated with Nolan. Elsa retorted. Denying any interest in questioning whom Nolan paid attention to. Scarlett asserting her connection with Nolan. Proposed that they would make a great couple due to their shared background. Elsa puzzled asked for clarification with a regal air. Scarlett revealed that they were friends' parents. That they had known each other for ages. And that they were of the same cloth. Elsa was out of Nolan's league. She declared Elsa at her breaking point. Shot back with a chilly demeanor. Saying she didn't remember going to Scarlet but that. She did remember hearing what Scarlet had to say. She was independent. She chose where and who to involve herself with. She declared. Ending with a sly smile. Scarlet gaped at her in shock. But Elsa was unfazed and continued. Saying that she would rather be a. Little room puppy. Then a big one. Elsa deliberately paused. Observing Scarlet's widened eyes. A big dog. She finished passively. Opening the door. She left the restroom. Leaving Scarlet bewildered at her audacity. Despite not feeling as self-assured as she projected. Elsa took pride in not revealing her vulnerability to Scarlet. It was unpleasant that Scarlet had noticed Elsa's feelings for Nolan. But Elsa knew she couldn't prove anything. After this encounter, Elsa increasingly caught Scarlet's scrutinizing and unfriendly gaze. Making her uncomfortable. She felt the urge to shield herself from Scarlet's scanning look. Conversely, Nolan began to view Elsa more favorably. He used to rush around the office and pay little attention to other people. But these days he would drop by Elsa's desk for a casual conversation unrelated to work. Elsa was shy and embarrassed at first. But she eventually warmed up to him and started to enjoy his company. They liked to talk about insignificant topics like the weather. Movies. And books. Nolan proposed that they go out to lunch one day. Elsa lied about not being hungry out of fear and panic. Which Nolan seemed to doubt but eventually accepted. But then he came back with a warm cup of coffee and an apple pie. Telling her that she couldn't work when she was hungry. Embarrassed. Elsa stammered her thanks. And when asked about payment. Nolan mysteriously grinned. Suggesting a different form of payment. When Elsa nervously inquired about this alternative. Nolan proposed going to the theater with him that night. Bewildered. Elsa hesitated. Eventually asking why he didn't invite Scarlett. Raising an eyebrow. Nolan seemed to be saying he wanted to accompany Elsa. Scarlett's mocking voice echoed in her mind. But Elsa met Nolan's gaze and consented to go with him. After their fantastic time at the play. Nolan asked Elsa to supper at a restaurant. Then, with a warm smile, he drove her home and asked if he could stop in for a cup of coffee. Elsa shook her head, resisting the idea of bringing Nolan into her rundown one-room apartment. The thought of such embarrassment was too much for her to handle. And she nervously replied, immediately regretting the words as she bit her tongue. What grounds did she have for imagining there would be another time? she chided herself for her incredible self-confidence. Her boss nodded agreeably. Though at that moment he didn't feel like her boss at all. Instead, he was an extraordinarily handsome man that gave her butterflies in her stomach. Trembling knees. And tingling sensations all over her body. 
Elsa could not imagine having him in her tiny apartment at that moment. Unable to recognize him as her boss. In that case. Can I at least get this as a thank you for the evening? Nolan offered sensing her uneasiness. He kissed Elsa tenderly on the lips before she could gather herself. Elsa closed her eyes. Thinking that this moment might as well be the most beautiful thing she had ever experienced in her life her head spinning from his taste and scent. I've been dreaming of doing this for so long. Nolan confessed. Pulling away a bit. His voice was slightly hoarse as he continued. Elsa. You drive me crazy. Looking into his eyes. Now even darker from passion. She could only exhale happily. And you me. She replied. And so their romance began. Elsa couldn't have dreamed of such a thing, Nolan. Took care of her tenderly and showered her with. Not too expensive but pleasant gifts since she refused expensive ones. He extended his invitations to plays. Concerts. And fascinating exhibitions. Even though they were strictly colleagues in the office. They were discreetly still in love. Even though there may have been a spark between them. Every day that went by. Scarlet's appearance grew more threatening and angrier in spite of their best efforts. Aware of Scarlet's motives. Elsa inquired as to whether anything had happened between them with Nolan. Nolan. Surprised by the question. Assured her that nothing had occurred. Elsa. Hesitating. Expressed her concern about Scarlet behaving as if she had some right over him. Nolan laughed it off. Revealing that their parents once considered arranging their marriage. However. He dismissed the idea. Stating that he didn't love Scarlet. And she didn't love him. Making any potential marriage nonsense. While Elsa wasn't entirely convinced that Scarlet felt nothing for Nolan. She chose to keep her suspicions to herself and remain vigilant. Elsa sensed that Scarlet closely observed her. Waiting for any misstep or error to seize the opportunity. The chance presented itself when Nolan and James had an important meeting. Explicitly instructing no one to enter or make contact. Elsa was about to go for a little break when Mary. The secretary. Told her about the boss's meeting that was going on and that she was going to run and get something to eat. Elsa consented to fill in for her for the brief absence. Elsa was alone in the reception area when a surprise guest strode into the office. The fashionable, well-groomed woman in her fifties insisted she could see Nolan whenever she wanted and rejected the idea of making an appointment. Following instructions, Elsa explained the purpose of the current meeting in a courteous manner. The guest, asserting her special status and right of entry, spoke in an icy tone Elsa refused to back down, obstructing the visitor's path. Suddenly Charlotte appeared in the reception, recognizing the visitor as Mrs. Smith. Charlotte greeted Mrs. Smith warmly and innocently expressed surprise at her presence. Mrs. Smith complained about Elsa's refusal to let her in. Belittling her as inexperienced and unprofessional, Elsa unaware that Mrs. Smith was Nolan's mother, felt a mix of indignation and humiliation, defending herself against the accusation of being unprofessional. Mrs. Smith condescending, lamented the hiring of inexperienced individuals and the subsequent difficulties they faced. Mrs. Smith strode into her son's office with imperious bearing. And Scarlet taking pleasure in Elsa's discomfort, shook her head, her malign pleasure visible to all. But when Nolan made the decision to present Elsa to his parents as his future wife, things took an unexpected turn. Astonished, Mrs. Smith cried out in shock at the thought of adding a uneducated country girl to their family. Nolan corrected his mother and stood up for Elsa praising her intelligence and education. Mrs. Smith continued to strongly object to the marriage, 
disliking Elsa's lack of social standing and background. Nolan remained firm, expressing his love for Elsa and rejecting his mother's objections. Despite Nolan's insistence, Mrs. Smith declared that she and Nolan's father would never acknowledge the union, making it clear they wouldn't attend the wedding. Nolan relayed the conversation to Elsa, softening the details to spare her feelings. But she couldn't help feeling saddened by the strong dislike directed towards her. News of Elsa and Nolan's impending marriage spread in the office, resulting in a shift in attitudes towards Elsa. Scarlett's fury was expected. But surprisingly, James also began to view Elsa with hostility, leaving her puzzled about what she had done to displease him. Elsa realized she had left her glasses behind when she left the office one evening while Nolan was away. She considered leaving them until the following day, but ultimately chose to get them back so she could finish up at home. She was shocked to discover that the office lights were still on and that she could hear James and Scarlett talking. James said that he was frustrated with being merely a partner in the company and that he wanted to take over as the sole proprietor. He also said that Nolan's union with Elsa made matters worse. Scarlett expressed her outrage at the turn of events. Elsa felt a chill run down her spine when she realized they were talking about her. Imagine if Nolan wants to make this fool a full-fledged partner said James. I won't allow it. Smiling Scarlet shot back. And who's going to ask you? Well as a woman. She's not bad at all James added thoughtfully. But he was met with an instantaneous groan. It seems that Scarlet pushed or struck him. Oh please please I'm kidding. She is not exceptional Elsa withdrew. Unable to listen any longer silently leaving the office. She made her way to the bus stop on the sidewalk while reaching for her glasses on the table. Trying to make sense of what she had heard. Elsa realized that James might not be Nolan's devoted friend. After he started thinking about how to take over their business. Elsa wondered if she should alert Nolan to this. But she wasn't sure if he would listen to her. After all. Elsa might look foolish if Scarlett confirms James' claim that she made it up. Elsa considered her options and made the decision not to tell Nolan. She'd battled with the decision all evening. But in the end she decided to keep the intensely personal conversation to herself and welcomed him. Back from court with a hot dinner and a passionate kiss. He looked very tired. And Elsa decided that speculating about their partners at this point was not appropriate. Rather she decided to pay closer attention to James and Scarlett at work. She would undoubtedly let Nolan know if she found out anything new that would put them in danger. Sadly this delay turned out to be expensive. Elsa saw James staring at her oddly multiple times that day. She staggered under his intense gaze scared and perplexed. Not understanding why he was staring at her in that way. She pondered whether he had discovered that she had been listening in on their chat with Scarlett. She had been extremely cautious and had not made herself known, so it didn't seem likely. When Nolan left the office for a moment, James invited Elsa into his space, which confused her even more. She noticed Scarlett giving her another odd look as she got up from her chair. She was deeply uncomfortable about it and began to wonder what the two of them were getting up to. As it happened, they were embroiled in a disgusting and terrifying situation. When Elsa came into the office, James pulled up her skirt and skillfully clamped his palm over her mouth, toppling her onto the desk. She moaned, unable to speak, her eyes darkening with horror and disgust as she tried to break free of his iron grip, which was too strong. James tried to have close touch with her. Elsa realized she was probably going to lost life. There because of the overwhelming feelings of shame. Disgust and helpless anger. At that critical moment the office door opened. And Elsa almost started crying with relief, she. Couldn't believe James hadn't thought to lock it. 
But her relief did not last long. Before Elsa had a chance to defend herself. Nolan and Scarlet stood in the doorway. Scarlet gave Nolan a victorious wave. Pointing to Elsa and saying. See Matt, she never gives James any space as I mentioned. She clings to him all the time poor guy. He doesn't even know where to hide from her. Elsa shocked and wide-eyed. Begged Nolan to believe it wasn't true. She clarified that James had made overtures toward her and invited her into the office. Nolan flushed and waited silently for James to give him an explanation. Scarlet went on to accuse Elsa of being dishonest and constantly attempting to get the boss's attention. Elsa was so overcome by how unfair everything was that she was unable to muster the courage to defend herself. She burst into tears and hurried out of the office, not even turning to look at James, Scarlet or Nolan. Neither she nor Nolan ever went back to the apartment or the office. Elsa was unable to forgive him for believing their accusations about her. And she couldn't bear to see him again. It was devastating that he could even entertain the possibility. Even for a split second that she was unfaithful Nolan never called her again. And even though she forced herself to believe she wasn't waiting for his call. She secretly wished he would at least give her an opportunity to clarify. Elsa cried a lot while lying on the bed during the first week following the incident. She stopped answering calls from friends. Stopped doing her regular tasks. And lost her appetite. She felt sick at the very thought of food. But when the nausea started happening frequently, mainly in the mornings, Elsa stopped crying and realized what was obvious, something that hadn't occurred to her right away. She connected the dots comparing timelines. And everything aligned despite the circumstances. She forced herself to clean up get ready. And leave the house to go to the nearest pharmacy. There she purchased several pregnancy tests. To confirm her suspicions and eliminate any chance of error. To her dismay all the tests unequivocally showed bright double lines. There was no doubt, Elsa was expecting Nolan's child. Contemplating for a long time. She debated whether to inform Nolan about the pregnancy. Despite their scandalous parting. He was the father. And she believed he had the right to know. But Elsa was afraid that if she told Nolan she was pregnant. He would believe that she set everything up to force him into marriage right away. Even worse she was terrified that he might think the. Child belonged to James instead of him. She even thought of writing a letter. Nolan I'm not asking for anything. And certainly not demanding. But I won't hide from the child who his father is. Because she couldn't take any more shame or humiliation. You can always see him if you'd like. Though she typed the text quickly. She didn't send it right away. While contemplating. Her gaze caught a news headline about a famous Moscow lawyer. Clicking the link. She discovered that Nolan considered one of the most eligible bachelors. Had announced his engagement. Scarlet his longtime friend and colleague. Was the chosen one unable to read further tears filled Elsa's eyes. She covered her face with her hands. Sitting motionless for a while trying to compose herself. Nolan had quickly found a replacement. And Scarlet was undoubtedly celebrating her achievement. Elsa was unable to remember how much time had passed in stillness and silence. After a while. She dried her tears and fixed her determined gaze on the laptop screen. She navigated to the close button and closed the news portal. She immediately erased the rough version of her letter to Nolan and never sent it. He didn't care about the child's news now that he was getting married. Her son looked a lot like his father when he was born, strong. Healthy and handsome. Elsa realized that her son would always bring up memories. Of her unhappy relationship when she looked into those big brown eyes and tan cheeks. Still she had no regrets about anything. Not even choosing not to have an abortion. Being a single mother proved to be challenging. Yet as Elsa looked at her charming little one. 
she realized she couldn't imagine life without him. Infants she discovered were not only a source of endearment and tenderness but also entailed dirty diapers. Endless loads of laundry sleepless nights children's illnesses. And a relentless cycle of routine. Losing track of weeks and dates. Every day seemed like an exact replica of the previous one. Money was scarce leading Elsa to take on any work from home gig she could find. Providing legal consultations online during the hours when Patrick was asleep. However these earnings were insufficient. Elsa had plans to return to a full-time office job. But Patrick was still too small for daycare. No facility accepted a child under one and a half years old. Her heart broke when she first left him at daycare. His bitter cries and calls for his mom haunted her as she rushed away. Wiping away tears feeling like a betrayer. Securing an office job proved challenging. As employers upon learning about her small child. Were reluctant to invite her for an interview. Many made it clear that employees with children were not a priority. Elsa faced rejection from legal firms and even regular notary offices. All hesitant to hire a young single mother. This meant constant sick leave with her child and no one else to help. Elsa eventually found work as an office manager, not in her area of expertise. But considering her circumstances, she couldn't afford to be picky. What mattered most was that they gave her a respectable salary. Her Patrick continued to be her joy and little sunshine. But life continued to present its share of difficulties. Pleasures and sorrows. Elsa purposefully kept Nolan out of her mind and refrained. From looking up information about him online. Although her heart still hurt occasionally. She told herself that these emotions would pass. Seven years later. After their last meeting. Elsa unexpectedly encountered Nolan again. Staring at him in disbelief. She asked. What are you doing here Nolan? He repeated uncertainly. Stumbling over his words. Elsa what are you? She couldn't believe what she saw. Nolan appeared thin emaciated and sick. With blue lips from the cold and wet hair and face from the drizzling rain. Nevertheless. It was Nolan who faced the twists of fate in his life. Despite Elsa having numerous reasons to resent Nolan. And hold him responsible for all her troubles. When she looked at him. She felt no malicious joy or satisfaction. Instead all she could muster was pity. Nolan said he didn't have a home when Elsa asked. Him about it and offered to take him there. Elsa asked him about a wife and family looking at him incredulously. But he said I have no one absolutely no one Elsa. Wanting to be of assistance made the decision to bring him to her home. She gripped the wheelchair's handles tightly and promised him a comfortable, welcoming space where he could tell his story. Nolan looked confused but given the situation. Elsa's choice seemed to be the only one that made sense. When Nolan hesitantly inquired about possible objections from her family, Elsa casually mentioned that she was single and didn't really know anyone. Elsa smiled noticing Nolan's tension and continued with the plan. However getting to her place proved challenging. As Elsa's house had a wheelchair ramp on the porch. She successfully maneuvered the wheelchair into the entrance. But there was no ramp in the hallway. She came to a stop in front of what seemed like a small obstacle, just five steps to the elevator but they seemed insurmountable to her. Now I can stand and move a bit if I hold on to the handrails. Nolan awkwardly suggested. He was clearly embarrassed that Elsa had witnessed his helplessness. Great she exclaimed. Then stay here for a moment while I lift the stroller. And then I'll help you climb as well done and done. Elsa dragged the wheelchair up the five steps. Left it on the landing and descended behind Nolan. He held on to the handrails with one hand and Elsa with the other. Carefully moving his legs. He finally made it through this climb. His legs trembled with fatigue as he repositioned himself in the wheelchair. Beads of sweat forming on his forehead. 
Elsa bit her lip as she studied him covertly. She wondered how it happened that a strong, active man at home could become a helpless invalid. She mostly helped Nolan get to the restroom, where he went to find hot water to warm up because it was freezing outside the church. She provided a clean towel and a warm terry cloth robe, indicating the location of shampoo, soap and other bath necessities, offering to help him wash. She suggested if you want I can assist you. However Nolan blushed and replied. Thank you I can manage unfazed Elsa said in jest. Yes don't be bashful. What have I missed out on there? Nolan asked for a stool so he could take a more comfortable bath. And a small smile appeared on his lips. Patrick received attention from Elsa. Who gave him a fever reducer and garbed him with throat. Spray while Nolan warmed up and took a bath. Hearing noises coming from the restroom. Patrick inquired who's this uncle. He's an old friend in trouble. Needing my help Elsa clarified. We'll have him around for a while. Do you not mind at all, with a solemn nod. Patrick said it's okay mom. You do realize that being a woman without a man is difficult. Elsa burst into laughter tousling Patrick's hair. And said what an idea you've picked up. My little philosopher. Mrs. Davis said so the boy elaborated. Mrs. Davis knows about life firsthand. Elsa sighed hugging her son. She then fed Patrick hot broth and he quickly fell asleep. As the noise of water subsided in the bathroom, Elsa waited considering decency, and eventually inquired if Nolan needed assistance. Having dried himself and donned a robe, Nolan nodded gratefully Elsa led him out of the bathroom, taking his elbow gently in hers. Can you make it to the kitchen with my help? She clarified in our small hallways. Pushing a wheelchair might not be the most practical option. With gratitude Nolan said. I can thank you taking a seat at the table. Elsa brought him a plate of broth. Some dark bread slices macaroni and cheese. And a jar of pickles saying rather apologetically. Be content with what you have as they say. Nolan thanked Elsa in a trembling voice. Revealing his emaciated appearance. Suggesting he had been living in hunger for the past few months. Despite the simplicity of the meal. He expressed immense gratitude. Elsa moved aside and went to turn on the kettle at the stove. She was amazed at the turns of events once more. Who would have imagined that the once most affluent. And envious groom in the nation's capital would now be. Having a modest and unpretentious dinner in her kitchen due to his lack of a house of his own, Elsa sat down next to him. A cup of freshly brewed tea infused with mint and thyme in front of him. And she stared deeply into Nolan's eyes. It was time to have a meaningful discussion. Tell me what happened to you. She asked in a gentle manner. With a bitter smile Nolan said. Don't you believe me, I've turned into a worthless moron. My business was taken away from me. So I no longer own it in a car accident. My parents passed away I'm so sorry she said. Her hand stroking his. And what happened to the business? I was set up Nolan moaned. They cunningly used and betrayed me. Who set you up? Elsa gasped James. My partner and friend you have to think of him. In addition my spouse Scarlett. Who turned out to be his concurrent lover. It's not possible Elsa uttered but regrettably perhaps. Even though at first I didn't think it was real. Nolan shook his head. He told the whole bleak tale. Word for word. It turns out that James had a dream of running our business by himself. Without any partners. But Nolan. In his right mind. Was never going to cede his peace. Thus. James and Scarlett devised a devious scheme. After Scarlett wed Nolan, James made a sizable payment to a criminal organization a few years later. Because of his line of work, he was well connected among the underworld. They assisted the authorities in creating a fake collision. 
That disabled the brakes of the vehicle carrying Nolan. His parents and themselves. The driver and his parents passed away immediately but Nolan lived. Changing from a fit individual to a miserable shell of his former self. It eventually came to light that James now owned all of my shares and all of the company's rights. Elsa gave a disbelieving clap of her eyes. But how could this happen? Scarlett kept pushing papers for me to sign while I was lying in the hospital recovering from the accident and dealing with the depression from my parents' death Nolan sighed. She claimed it had to do with my job and I without looking up. He said I signed without reading. Elsa speculated just that ultimately. Upon my release from the hospital, I discovered that I had lost my job my apartment and my wife. What a heinous act of treachery Elsa shook her head. Triggering a recollection of the incident when I discovered you with James in the office. Scarlett affirmed your persistent pursuit of him. Branding it a deceitful setup. Elsa exclaimed indignantly. Understand Elsa I comprehend now in the past. I refused to listen burdening myself with guilt. I longed for you and still love you. He sighed strange love Elsa he continued. Unable to resist a sarcastic smile. Not even a month post breakup. You were already announcing your wedding with someone else. I thought marrying Scarlet would help me forget about you. Did it work? Elsa inquired quietly he met her gaze. Shaking his head no after settling Nolan on the couch. Elsa talked about her plans for the following day at work. I haven't had time to open sick leave but Patrick is a little sick. So I won't be taking him to daycare. Is it too much trouble for you to keep an eye on him until the evening of tomorrow? She inquired of course Elsa he answered with enthusiasm. I would love to hang out with your son I'll jot down the prescriptions he requires on paper. Nothing fancy. He eats anything you give him and is an independent little boy who takes his medication without complaint. Okay thank you she exclaimed you're helping me so much at work. They're already looking at me disapprovingly because of constant sick leaves. It's thanks to you Nolan said quietly Elsa was restless the next day at work. Worried about the men's well-being at home her concerns were unwarranted. Though when Elsa came back. The aroma of fried potatoes welcomed her as she opened the door with her key. Breathless and excited. Her hunger snarled in her stomach. She'd missed lunch because she was so focused on her work. Grinning and filled with joy Patrick dashed into the hallway. Mom is present, what's up with you guys? Elsa inquired while pecking her son's cheek. Everything is just great. The young son exclaimed with pride. Uncle Nolan made me an airplane and a sailboat and fixed the kitchen socket. Together we even fried potatoes and I assisted him in peeling them. Nolan wheeled into the hallway and spotted Elsa. Greeting her with a smile. You have an amazing son he complimented. I felt we got along great not just with yours. But with ours mentally Elsa agreed but refrained from vocalizing it. As they savored dinner she broached the topic. Questioning Nolan about why he hadn't fought or sued. For his company despite being a skilled lawyer. She highlighted that proving James and Scarlett's guilt. Should have been straightforward for him Nolan responded. Citing the weight of his parents' death. His own helplessness. And the betrayal from a friend and wife. He explained that. Feeling alone in the world. He saw no reason to fight. Elsa shook her head. Holding Nolan's hand tenderly as she expressed her worry. And wish for him to be with her again and for justice to be served. The thought cheered Nolan. Who acknowledged the theoretical possibility but pointed. Out that there was still a lot of work to be done on documents. Archives and the lack of a laptop. Using her law school knowledge. Elsa offered her computer kindly to others while she was at work. Demonstrating her willingness to assist in any way she could. Nolan grateful for her support suggested that with her help things might work out. Elsa inquired about his health pointing to his wheelchair. 
and asked about the doctor's predictions regarding his ability to stand. Nolan admitted uncertainty stating it was a 50-50 chance. Explaining the need for special therapeutic exercises massage. And the desire to get better Elsa who had taken professional massage courses for her son. Patrick's back issues when he was younger offered her massage expertise. Considering her as a possible angel sent from above. Nolan recognized that the procedure was easier in theory than it actually was in practice, which took several months to complete. Nolan made vital new connections and gained the support of some of his old friends he could fully trust by connecting with them again on the internet. He started gathering evidence against Scarlett and James, and neither his former friend and partner nor his ex-wife knew that Nolan was looking into their background. Surely they were convinced he had died a long time ago. Somewhere in a homeless shelter or under a fence. Now that Nolan was taking care of all the household duties, cooking, laundry and even cleaning, Elsa found life to be much more manageable. Nolan was still fairly nimble. And as promised, the daily massages from Elsa helped him to stand with increasing assurance. He was still moving along the wall. But he was clearly making progress as compared to how he was. When Elsa first saw him close to the church. However Patrick became close to Uncle Nolan because he kept calling him that. Elsa felt the impulse to tell them the truth from time to time. But she refrained because she had already been burned once. Now she was wary. Like blowing on water after getting burned by milk. It was Nolan who found out the truth one day. When Elsa got back from work, she had no idea what had happened. She exclaimed boys I'm home. From the other room Patrick said hello mom. Keeping his eyes fixed on the cartoons, Nolan emerged into the corridor. Able to stand on his own but with unsteady legs. Elsa exclaimed. Wow you're improving. See you'll be running soon. But Nolan crossed his arms over his chest without a word and gave her a critical look. She questioned startled. What happened? Why are you looking at me like that? Today I accidentally came across scans of my documents on the computer. He said with a steady tone. Passport Patrick's birth certificate. Elsa relaxed seeing where he was going. You never were married. He said shaking his head. Your passport does not bear a divorce or marriage registration stamp. In addition he was born eight months following our separation. In other words you left me pregnant already. Would you like to clarify anything? Elsa bent her head down. She muttered I was scared. Nolan pummeled his fist against the wall in rage. Have I not the right to be aware that I would become a parent? Elsa stumbled. I thought you wouldn't believe me that the child was yours. I wanted to tell you everything. Though honestly. Then I came upon a news article online stating that. You were getting married to Scarlet. Silently why didn't you tell the truth now? He questioned when you brought me home. Introduced me to your son as Uncle Nolan. Why did you present me as Uncle Nolan in his eyes? Nolan squinted disapprovingly as Elsa sighed tossed me a guess. Admitting to the child that his father is disabled made you feel uncomfortable. You assumed he would feel embarrassed by me. Nolan are you insane? Yelled Elsa that is not at all the topic. In response. Nolan said so what are you waiting for, justifications. Elsa said at first I was waiting for the right moment to tell you. But then you got caught up in taking back your company. I believe that Patrick and I would no longer be needed by you if you were successful. Well would there be a place for us in your new. Rich and famous life. Patrick questioned in shock. Nolan said shaking his head Elsa you're a fool. Are you not understanding, I only completed all of this for you. Not understanding Elsa inquired for me. Nolan elaborated of course to regain or rather. To earn back your love because mine never went anywhere over five years later. At the anniversary of the renowned law firm. The city's most famous lawyers gathered. The celebration was magnificent. 
with trained waiters offering champagne and exquisite treats. A live orchestra played. And the ladies dazzled in their evening gowns. Yet the most beautiful person was the hostess Elsa. The wife of the firm's owner and business partner. She attracted attention with her slim, stylish and well-groomed appearance. Smiling dazzlingly and answering questions. A journalist asked. Is it true that you and Nolan once had not very successful times in your life? Elsa nodded. Acknowledging the truth. There was even a period when we ate plain pasta and fried potatoes because we couldn't afford meat. The reporter chuckled. Perceiving it as a clever jest. But Elsa was aware that everything was accurate. They made a fresh start and succeeded in obtaining their goals five years ago. James and Scarlett were charged and were serving their terms not too far away. After regaining his business, Nolan made Elsa his partner because she was the only person he could truly trust. They eventually tied the knot one month later. Uncle Nolan was the best father in the world. According to Patrick, who was now attached to him as a father figure lost in her memories. Elsa heard a voice that snapped her back to the present Nolan approached her. Looking exceptionally handsome in his new tuxedo resembling a Hollywood actor at the Oscars. Amidst the hustle of guests and journalists throughout the evening, he playfully teased her, asking if she could spare a minute for her own husband. Elsa busy with her schedule responded with a smile, suggesting he schedule an appointment noting an opening next week. Without hesitation under the bright flashes of cameras and curious eyes, Nolan kissed his wife directly on the lips. Elsa laughed and said people are watching you madman. Without much of an argument using the opportunity. Nolan said by the way Mr. Nolan. I have valuable and very important news for you. Nolan answered Elsa's question with. Absolutely top secret information. Our family will grow to four in about seven months. Elsa then disclosed Elsa said. Yes you'll be a dad for the second time and I'll be a mom. As Nolan's eyes grew wide with realization. Unable to contain his joy any longer. Nolan hugged his wife gently the onlookers. Admiring the beautiful couple whispered among themselves. Few could imagine the trial's treacheries deprivations. And betrayals they had endured to finally deserve. Their long-awaited and hard-fought happiness, happiness. That they were determined never to give up to anyone ever again.